Okay, hi everybody. Yeah, I'm Ben Cruz. Um, I started at Google about two and a half years ago on the Google for Work training team. Uh, my initial focus was actually on localization, which was making sure training was available. Um, as Rick said, just you know, every uh, uh, being accessible to everyone, like in every language, every country, every region. Um, but recently, um, Google has this, this idea of a 20% project or role. Like basically, you have your core job, but the company really encourages you to kind of reach into a new area or you know try something new like um, for, for example gmail was created just on one guy's like uh 20 percent time so they call it so it's it's really like taking a small percentage of fraction of your work day and like our work week rather and uh building something cool and you know hopefully useful to everyone so um anyway so my 20 percent role that i started recently is with the youtube captioning team um, as a caption evangelist and that's just within our own company um or what it means within our own company is making sure that all of the Google produced videos are captioned and available on YouTube. Um, but then I'm also advocating externally, like hopefully all of you as video producers are considering captions for your videos. Um, so today I'm gonna have, I, I'm gonna try to rush really quickly because I have three pillars really to go over. First, it's best practices um, for captioning. Second, it's uh, new emerging web standards and technologies about captioning. And then finally, um, this idea of innovation and using captions creatively in your videos. So as for best practices, um, I mean, I feel like I'm building off of uh, the, our previous presenters' uh, facts, but here it is again, just, you know, it's good to bring the awareness out there that um, vid video captions are not just for deaf and hard of hearing. It actually benefits, according to one study, 80% of caption users are, are cited. So. Uh, really consider that you're you're making it accessible to all kinds of people um, all around the world. So, uh, so yeah, exactly, 20%. And then, just briefly, accessibility really is about including everybody, um, and really kind of going back to the fundamental definition of accessibility. It's about uh, reaching the reaching more amount of people um, and making sure that your content's understood and appreciated by everyone. Uh, I'll skip this to go to the more practical stuff. Um, but anyway, there are important design considerations um, for video captions. Um, first of all, it's quality. Um, it really is about that QA process. I'm not sure if you know, AI is going to get us exactly where we want to be, but we do want to make sure that you know, the content is at least 99% accurate. Um, you know, things like punctuation, um, using capital letters, these are you know, kind of small details, but it really is, it makes all the difference in the final delivery. Um, speaker identification, this, this is like audio description. It's really being clear as to who's speaking at what time um, in the captions, um, including those non-speech sounds uh, and describing the scene. Um, you can be kind of clever by using punctuation in, in smart ways, like instead of in parentheses saying shouting hi, just add an exclamation point and it really uh, gives, it, it, it describes it, I guess, more succinctly. Um, verbatim, uh, just yeah, making sure that you're painting the scene just um, in descriptions. And finally, placement. When you're thinking about captions in your video, you know, we're so used to seeing the lower thirds just kind of display of a small text. Um, thanks to new te technologies, that's changing, and you can actually play around with the placement of the text and the display. Um, you all probably know this, but captions are supported, luckily, by you know, a huge number of platforms, um, even like you know, DVD media. No one really uses that anymore, but if you had to. Um, YouTube, uh, yeah, Netflix, Hulu, um, also most, well, mobile phone video players support captioning. And eventually, uh, HTML5 uh, new web standards are making sure that all browsers natively support uh, captions. Can you put the comments in Yeah, sure. There you go. <laughs> yeah, I miss streaming servers, so that's, that's another consideration. Um, so let me talk about the, the emerging web standards. Um, first, what is it? Um, it's really breaking down your content into video and audio and text. Um, and these new standards are, are making sure that you know, HTML5 browsers are natively supporting them. Um, also incorporating older technologies um, that haven't been used on captions before. Uh, for, for example, CSS, that's really just a way to style your web content. Um, you know, if you've ever seen like 
a drop shadow on a, on a web page. Like that's probably done through CSS. Um, that wasn't possible before with captions, but thanks to new standard, standards, it will be. Um, increased accessibility, um, consistent behavior across platforms. It's, it's important that you know, you're not making captions look a certain way and then you know, look at it on a different device and then all the formatting gets messed up. Like we want to avoid that. Um, so here I have a demo. This is an example of HTML5 video. And you'll notice at the bottom, sorry, it's a little too loud, but you'll notice at the bottom that there are uh, low captions, but they're not traditional, right? They're not placed over the video. They're not uh, obscuring any of the visual content. Rather, they're displayed below the video frame, but act just the same. Um, Sorry about that. Okay, um, but as I said, these are very early days. This is me trying it out on Safari, and it just didn't work. Um, so you do have to be mindful that these are totally new standards. Don't exp don't use them if you really want to. I don't know, release something today because not everyone's going to be able to utilize it. But this is a really good sign of where things are headed. Um, probably the next year or two, it'll be you know st standard supported by everyone. Um, this is what a web VTT file looks like. This is essentially the where the captions are going to go. It's just a simple text file. Um, just like previous standards, it shows the time when the when the caption gets displayed. Um, and then there are a few new things like these tags. There's a like a C tag here, a U tag, um, just basic formatting. Um, if you're interested in creating your own captions, uh, these are a few tools, um, jot them down. Um, if you're delivering on YouTube, and if YouTube is really the only you know, delivery platform that you'll be using, luckily it has its own uh, caption creation tool. Um, you'll see the screenshot in the bottom right. Like you, you can just go ahead and add captions in real time there. Um, but you know, if you're delivering in, in you know, traditional like disk media or somewhere else, like you might want to just create outside of YouTube um, your own caption files. Um, I don't really have time for this, but um, there are kind of emerging solutions that are possible thanks to this new technology. Um, I've always been interested in compositing and kind of post-production workflows. Um, and a huge you know, consideration has been like how to treat text. Like I would love to, you know, for example, to take a live Twitter stream and bring those tweets into my video, you know, like while I'm editing and then push it out an hour later and just have like more dynamic available content. Um, and so these are a few solutions out there that are kind of playing around with that. Like, how do we take dynamic text and use it in our videos? Um, so yeah, I'll try to send out these links later so you can check them out. Um, and that's where, that's where I'm kind of leading into directing captions. It's this new idea that captions aren't just like this you know, kind of second thought thing that, that you add to your videos. It really, you can start thinking about it as something that you compose within your projects. Um, and so the way I see this headed is um, really the same UX principles that are applied to kind of websites um, and graphic design. Those will start being, or rather these technologies will enable that sort of pr workflow for video captioning. Um, so you can you know, think about colors, like you know, how much does it matter that the caption is in red for a certain scene? Um, think about sizing, timing, placement, formatting. Um, there are video libraries. If anyone's using JW Player, it's this really popular um, web web library for for video playback. Um, it's already incorporating these VTT captions. So, you know, just see see what delivery systems you're using. They might already be supporting these new standards. Um, and I'll just show this demo. This one really impressed me on the left. It's um, it's kind of like the other preview, except they're, they're using more stylistic effects on the text. The web is always changing, and the way we access it is changing. The source of that change is you. Developers all around the world who are using our tools to create great new things. And with so many tools, the sky's the limit. But it can't happen without you and your ideas. So there you see very beautiful transitions between the text. Like, this is stuff that, you know, the, the captions are still accessible, um, but 
sighted viewers will you know, have a new appreciation. Like, wow, like I didn't know text could complement the video so well, um, like in a, in a website. Um, also, SEO, like you know, uh, you're going to be helped out a lot if you have these captions like kind of indexed by search engines, and people will just find your video content much easier. And so this is my dream for the future. There's this movie, um, well, Stranger Than Fiction, that came out a while ago. Um, but I remember that intro title sequence blowing my mind because it was kind of like early days of digital co compositing. Um, but it utilized text in very interesting ways. So I'm just going to play this. Um, my dream is that someday we'll just be able to leverage captions directly within our video projects um, to make them yes, accessible, localizable, and more impressively expressive. It was a man of infinite numbers, endless calculation. Harold would brush each of his So this would be the idea. It's like, can we take times. plain text and incorporate it uh, dynamically within our video projects like this? And you know, say down. you're delivering this in a different language, could the words actually be dynamically changed into a different language? And luckily, with these emerging emerging technologies, I think I think someday it will it will be just dynamically created. Okay. All right. Thank you.